This episode of Deconstructed is brought to you by the NVIDIA Shield Android TV. Welcome to Deconstructed, where we break down one of our most popular lists and go through it number by number and try to figure out why the game's placed where they did. We also play some of the most hotly debated entries because playing games is fun. Today we're looking at top 10 open world games. Let's meet the panel. We got Dave on the end, Andrew in the middle as he is wont to be, and Mike on my end. Giddy up. You guys ready? Let's do this. Okay, so number 10 was Arkham City, which is widely considered to be the best in the series uh, for taking it out of the asylum and into an open world, which thus makes it eligible for this list. Now, we got a comment here from Crazy Collector TV, who says, Arkham City 10, kiss my ass. It should be at least three, or top three. See, that's a crazy comment. It's a great game. It's fantastic, you're the Dark Knight. The reason it placed low on the list at number 10 is it's a limited experience. You're in a prison city, and it's kind of limited in the fact that you're going after Riddler trophies, you can't just go anywhere, you can't do what you could do in these other open world games. So you're saying that it's essentially like smaller than a lot of It's smaller, stuff. but it's so fine, and it's, it's focused, and it's, okay, it doesn't have as much filler, you can't spend hundreds of hours, but it's a perfect experience, and it, it should be number 10. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so at number nine, we had Fallout 3, which we're technically playing right now, but we're also technically not. We're playing Fallout New Vegas, for reasons that I will explain in a second. We're also playing it on the NVIDIA Shield Android TV, which allows us to use a gaming PC that's actually in another room and stream it up here in 1080p, 60 frames per second, so it's pretty gnar. How do you like the controller, Andrew? I like it a lot. It's extremely familiar, but uh, feels well, a lot more well-built. It's very like Xboxy y slash um, DualShock-y, but at the same time, like, you're familiar. So, Fallout 3 at number nine. Any thoughts about that? It's one that didn't quite age the best. Like, I'm not saying it's, a, it's a bad, like, it's still a great game. But I also feel like it's also very limited in the ways you can get around. Like you can only walk or fast travel and that's it too. Like compared to everything else, you're like even with a Batman game, which we had before, where you could where you could glide and use the, the grappling hook. Here you can just walk or just use fast travel. And but don't you think that adds sort of dimension to the whole world? Like as an open world game, it makes the world feel kind of bigger if you have to actually do the walk yourself each time. But I also feel like it kind of slows down the pace at, at points where you feel like um, you're, you're just walking th across it very gradually. Well, in this one, you're not the wanderer, you're the courier, but like, I mean, for Fallout 3, for instance, you are the lone wanderer. If you don't wander, mm -hmm. what's the point of calling you that? This game is, it's like a book. The, the world is so deep, there's so much to do and explore. It's, it's phenomenal. I personally think that it should be higher. It could be top five, maybe six. I mean, yes, okay, there's, you know, age, there's glitches, there's all kinds of little things that today are like unforgivable, I guess. But to me, it's, it's like one of those experiences that will never be replaced. I, uh, I got a comment here that agrees from you. Travis Busteed says, how is Fallout 3 that low? To put it beneath SR4, which is Saints Row 4, is borderline offensive. I'm personally offended, yeah. You're, pers <laughs> you're, personally, you're personally offended by your own list. That's what yeah. you're saying. Well, no, I mean, I don't make the list exclusively. I work with you guys, you know, but uh, it's, I find this is just a much deeper experience and it's much more influential. And Saints Row, you know how that, that's kind of like they have to do their own thing from Grand Theft Auto. We'll get there, but Fallout, it's, it's in a different league. It should have been above it, in my opinion. As much as Fallout 3 and Vegas are really, really, really good games, uh, there's a lot holding them back. They're extremely buggy. I mean, Bethesda is, like, notorious for that. Uh, the day, I mean, not even day one patches, it took months for Fallout 3 to be what I would consider to be playable. You well, know, I, so I, think, I think actually Vegas had bigger. If you look at the, yeah, the Vegas Metacritic, did. Vegas definitely had it, more issues. It, yeah. uh, it bumped it down out of the 90% because of the bugs it had. All right, so a uh, perfect comment to segue into this next entry is I thought Saints Row 4 was stupid and ruined the Saints Row series. That was from Anthony the Beastly Taco Bell. Anybody thoughts on that? Ruined the series? I thought it sort of saved no, the I series. No, I think it kind of improved. I, I think it's, it's one of those cases where it started off as a GTA clone and they didn't want to do that. So what they did is they went absolutely balls to the wall crazy. And I think that's kind of what helped the series uh, evolve over the time and help it establish its own identity because of its absolutely crazy experience. Yeah, like, it had to be its own thing. You got to get the dubstep gun, the mm -hmm. Matrix vibe. It, it just can't compete on Grand Theft Auto trying to do the same thing. And the fact that it was doing its own crazy thing allowed its uh, uh, mission variety to be a mo lot more fun and interesting, in my opinion. On to number seven, Priyash Monu says, I just feel that Far Cry 3 should be higher on the list. I mean, way up. It's at number seven. 
Thoughts? I think it absolutely belongs at number seven. Me too. Like, it had a bit, the yeah. story was kind of dumb. Nobody cares about the frat boys. Voss was an amazing character, but he disappears halfway through the story. However, the open world is phenomenally fun. It's extremely organic. But I think it does sort of suffer from the Ubisoftism of like, there's like a lot of the same sort of quest potchmarked all it's, over the island. It's crazy because it's just outpost, capture the outpost, go up into the radio tower, expand your, your field of view. Yeah, you said something earlier, like everyone plays about 70% of the game. Eh? 70%, all the big moments like burn them down or whatever the name of the mission is, that's they can over. They burn them. <laughs> yeah. 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 On to number six, we got Just Cause 2. Okay, so for our comment for Just Cause 2, we have this guy who, this is actually rather common, submitted his own list and commented on each one, why he thought it would be where, and then at the very end, under special considerations, he says, Just Cause 2. Storyline was trash, only fun when you trash shit, combat sucks. Only good thing is grappling hook. When we originally ranked that list, Just Cause 2 was the biggest open world game at the time. Aside from World of Warcraft, but that's not really that's, you know, part of yeah, our criteria. It's not really but, sandboxy. Yeah, but it, it was the biggest uh, open world game at the time. It also had a much, uh, very, much varied map compared to a lot of the other entries. Cool. So that's why it got as high as it did. Okay, moving right along. At number five, we had Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Now, something I noticed in the comments, uh, and a lot of people were just saying this sort of offhand when they were listing their own lists, but a lot of people were saying Assassin's Creed 3 was better. Now, I was told, I am not actually a fan of the series, but I was totally under the impression that number four with the pirate ship is better. No, oh, that was a lottery. Yeah. Okay, so no argument there. We can move right on. Number four, which was Red Dead Redemption. I feel like it, if more people liked Cowboys, we would be placing this at number one. But unfortunately, <laughs> like I, I feel that like it just is not a genre that's popular with the kids these days or back in whenever it came I out. I feel like what held it back was it's kind of like morality system. Um, in an open world game where Rockstar is known for- For can, letting you be horrible. Yeah, being horrible and yeah. go, go, going crazy. The fact that the mor morality system was there kind of held you back from doing that and I kind of felt like that was kind of counter counterintuitive. On to number three. So we mentioned at the beginning that Minecraft was our most contentious entry. Just to read you a few samples from the comments, Minecraft the third? All of this games are better than Minecraft. F Minecraft. It should be the last one, not the third one. Punctuation is all over the place. Now, I was talking to, was it Mike? You said you didn't think it should actually be on well, this no, list. Well, no, I said I understand why it's on the list and it is one of the best open world games, but spoiler alert, it's gonna end up on our creation list also. I find the reason that you're, we're getting so much blowback on that, at least from those guys, is because it's more like every other game, it's like one of these things is not like the other. This game is about creation, there's no real goals, the map is randomly generated, there's no finite boundaries. So it's different, so people are like, ah, oh, it's so different, but it is an open world game, and it is one of the most, the deepest experiences you could have as an open world game. I think you touch on a point that I, um, that I think is sort of important, it's that like, Minecraft essentially created its own genre, and there are so many other games now that are coming out, especially on early access and green light, it's, it's all like Minecraft with dinosaurs, Minecraft with more cannibals, Minecraft with no crafting. If we had done this list now, I feel like this might have been criteria. But at the time, I feel like it was a huge admission to leave it off. Well, well that's the thing, because with, with these lists, when you have hybrid entries like this, it ends up either being criteria, and then people are like mad it's not included, or because it's so good, it's Minecraft, it ends up being in the top three, as what happened. Do you think it's also the point that a lot of people hate it because it's popular? I think a lot of people, I think there's this this sort of thing, like it's popular, it's popular with kids. You have to play it to sort of understand why it's good. One, I, of, one of the arguments I'd say to, to put it on an open world list is that I think one of the best parts about open world games is that like there's these, they set up these systems and then you have organic experiences within them. Like Grand Theft Auto, you didn't expect to get hit by that car, you didn't expect to hit that person with that car, you didn't expect to fall off the building. There's these experiences that just sort of happen on the fly that like no one else has had. Yeah. And I think that Minecraft does that extremely well once you get into it. Like sure, there's no physics or anything like that, but a lot of the fun stuff is just these stories that sort of generate from your own. It's not stories that the developers have built into the game, it's stories that you create for yourself. I was playing, we were playing on a server that buddy of our host did a whole bunch of people play on the server, and I saw this guy made this like great wooden like overbridge, and I was working nearby and I accidentally lit his bridge on fire and I he didn't realize I was He was working nearby on a lava castle. 
He was making literally like Bowser's castle, but for himself. Yeah. And literally the lava touched the bridge and this whole suspension bridge that this guy had made out of wood sticks just went up in flames. And then Andrew told me about it and I was like, dude, we're gonna get kicked off the server. You have to fix it. So we stayed up all night fixing it. <laughs> That's what I did that night. It was like, it was a lot of fun, but it was awful. And it took me like four or five hours to fix this guy's enormous bridge and he hadn't even noticed. He never like, even okay. noticed it was, it was broken. Noticed. So at number two, we got Skyrim. Uh, I mean, I love Bethesda's games, so this is definitely one of my favorites. I think number two is quite generous for it. Uh, and I have a comment here. Skyrim is low on the list because even though it's awesome, it's got faults like repetitive fetch quests, boring dungeons, etc. I kind of didn't really like Oblivion. I thought Oblivion was a really good game trying to escape Bethesda's sort of bugginess and repetition. <laughs> But I absolutely loved Skyrim from like start to finish. Well, you never finished a Bethesda game. But like I found everything about Skyrim was just better. The combat was just tighter just enough, you know, so, the atmosphere was better. So for this list, top 10 open world games, would you put Skyrim at number one? I wouldn't put it at number one. I think it's absolutely fine at two. Okay, so finally, number one, we got uh, Grand Theft Auto V. Thoughts? Gold standard. It's, I feel like I could do anything in a modern setting. There's no limitations. If I want to go to the strip club, <laughs> don't, tell, don't tell my wife. I did, crash or crash into a wall. Or use your virtual cell phone. I'm See, the thing, I think that. you touch on two points that I, that like support the number one spot and sort of take away from it. Like, first of all, you're completely right. And I really do think this is why we had to put a Grand Theft Auto game as number one. It's that like, it is the gold standard for open world games. GTA 3 may not have invented sandbox open worlds, but it definitely defined it for the wider no, audience. Um, however, I always feel like in these games and even in Red Dead Redemption, I find you, they let you do so many things, but I find most of those things are really mundane. Like I remember I quit Red Dead Redemption because I was herding cattle and I was like, this is, why do I want to do a shitty job from the 1800s? No, it's more fun to mess with the cops. Like, it's definitely trying to uh, go for like that variety uh, value for us. So you, you've got a lot of things you can do and you can pretty much do anything you want. So you, I'm getting, guessing what you're saying is like, it's got this stuff here, but it's not that good. Is that what, kind of what you're saying? All of its value is right there at its face. The more you dive in, the more it's just like, oh, okay, you can watch virtual TV, you can, like I said, work at the shipping yards. But like, is any of that like fun? I don't know. 90% of the game is spent in car chases, in shootouts with the cops, in shootouts with other monsters, or you're just enjoying the story, you're enjoying the character. How memorable is Trevor? Name yeah. one character in Skyrim. What? Yeah, uh, no, I... The, 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 the Arl there, one of the Arls. I think one of the things that makes this series so popular is that it is set in a context which everyone can recognize. I mean, I personally like games because I go to places that don't exist, but I think there's a lot of appeal in just in like things that simulate real life. Yeah, because I can't go out right now and do what this guy's doing, you know what I mean? But I like to. <laughs> the multiplayer is just phenomenal. It's unprecedented. The way you can get into heists with your friends, you know, the way you can go out in the open world and get run over by somebody and then get run over by him again and then get run over by him again. You know, that, all of that is a lot of fun and it just all synergizes incredibly well. There's a comment from our user, Jacob Cummings, uh, with no G, uh, <laughs> Jacob <laughs> Cummings, excuse me. How is GTA 5 higher on this list than Skyrim? Skyrim, you can go everywhere and you can see and enter every house. Also in Skyrim, there are massive hidden cave system, massive inlands and the ability to build your house. In GTA, you cannot even enter every house. I mean, you look at like the biggest city in Skyrim is like what, like Winterhold or Mark Karth? And they're not, that big. I mean, granted, this game is mostly city, but every little aspect is more detailed than, than it is in Skyrim. There's more people. They have to deal with cars, you know? They have to deal with airplanes, helicopters. The animations in this are superlative. Every, everything looks smooth. The, uh, the motion capture, the, the, uh, the lip syncing, everything is bang on. I, figure, I feel the, the weakest parts of Skyrim are the parts where people are actually talking to you. So we're all good here with this being number one. I mean, I, I love I think, Skyrim too. I think I enjoyed it more than I did this, but for top 10 open world games, I think this is a very solid number one. I think, no? it's, a, I think it's a perfect pick, yeah. yeah. Well, that's it for today's episode of Deconstructed. Special thanks to NVIDIA for sending us this sweet Shield Android TV, which allowed us to stream and capture all the footage you saw us playing today. Be sure to check out our suggest page to vote on upcoming episodes and to vote on upcoming top 10 lists. And of course, for more great content published every day, be sure to check out watchmojo.com. Thank <music> you.